Welcome to part nine of half bath to full bath conversion. Today we're going to be working on the floor. You can see the areas where the wall was removed. All these tiles here will have to be replaced all the way around and down to here because they're all cut. All these along here are cut. And then if we go over into the kitchen area, you can see a, a part here that's going to need to be filled in with tile. And then in the bathroom, all of these, and then all along here will have to be removed and replaced as well. And then over where the pantry was, all these will have to be replaced too. I was able to remove one of the UPC tags that was embedded in the mortar when I removed the tile. So I was able to look that up and find some matching tile. So I'm going to start by using a chisel to try and get underneath the tile because I want to try and save any of these tiles that I can because they're going to match better than the new ones that come from a different run. These tiles are a few years old and the new tiles that I purchase are not going to match exactly. But the if I can get these tiles off here, they'll be a great match no matter where I put them. So I've got a couple tiles here that I can save. And there's another one that's good. If I have a cut tile, I can use those. And some of these tiles have chips on the edge that I'll have to remove as well. And I may even chip a few getting some of these cut tiles out of here, but I'm gonna try to get these out with as little damage as possible. Hardest part will be getting through the grout because the grout is going to attach the tiles together. So any force that I exert on the tile is gonna transfer over to the next tile and potentially chip or break the next tile that I want to try to keep and I'm gonna have to be real careful because these tiles are porcelain and they are very sharp once they break I'm gonna start chiseling out some of this grout so that it doesn't crack any of the other tiles that I want to try and keep you can see I get some grout stuck in there I'll have to remove this one as well. And it's just a matter of going through and chiseling out. Some of them are stuck better than the others. And those that are stuck real well are just going to have to be broke. And I'll have to come back in with my new tiles. This one has a chip in it, so I'm going to have to remove it. Oh, and you can see I chipped that one right there, right on the end here. So I'll have to remove that one as well. And since this one's already broke, I'm just going to use the hammer and chisel it out, chip it out with the hammer, and try to hit the force away from the other tiles that I want to try to keep. That way I don't chip any of those. If I can get the tile off in one big piece, that'd be great. Instead of having all these little pieces, it doesn't always work. And when that doesn't work, I'll just use the hammer once again. And I noticed some damage to this next tile, so I'm going to remove that one as well. Try to take out some of the grout so I don't damage the next tile. And I'll just chisel this one out with the hammer. I use the corner of the hammer right on the edge of the hammer. It seems to work a lot better than hitting it straight on because right on the corner of the hammer right here, it's got an edge. So I try to hit it with the edge of the hammer it gives it more of a point if i had a different hammer it may work a little bit better something with a little bit better point on it but using the corner of the head of the hammer seems to work pretty good here cracks the tile up pretty good okay, i've got all the tile removed in the bathroom that i want to remove so i'm going to come out to the main area 
start removing tiles here and you can see I was able to pick up another UPC off the bottom. It's a good way of finding out what tile was used. A lot of people won't pull those off when they put the tile down because there's one on each tile and it just gets too con time consuming for the installer to take off the UPC off each tile and you'll find them embedded in the mortar once you take the tile up. So again, I'm kind of chiseling away from the tiles that I want to save. That way none of the force transfers over to the tiles that I want to save. I'm going to move into the kitchen area now. Just a couple over here that need to be removed. And you can see the old linoleum underneath where the cabinets used to be. They put the cabinets down first and then tiled right up to the cabinets and this house. So I'm gonna just repeat the process just to keep the countertops level. And I'm gonna move over to the former pantry area and start removing the tiles over here. Make sure I get the grout out of there as well. And there's a few more tiles left that I can see that I want to remove and I'll clean this up a little bit and see if any of the other ones are damaged and if there's any other tiles that I need to remove that got chipped or damaged. And you can see I still have the wonder board underneath where the tile is. That also is going to have to be removed. There's so much mortar on it that the new tiles will never be level with the old tiles. So I'm gonna to try to cut the wonder board by using my pry bar. It's kind of sharp on the end. I'll just take my hammer and kind of use this pry bar as a chisel and go along where the grout line is and hopefully get down all the way to the wood subfloor. I've got a little grout there, get that out of the way. And I'll just go along the grout line and cut the wonder board, basically. I'm trying to do this without creating a whole lot of dust. Okay, so I've got it cut part of the way up. Let's see how this wonder board comes up. Get the big pry bar and look, it's nailed down in multiple places here. See if I can, yeah, it's it's stuck pretty good, and there's a lot of nails. Looks like they mortared it down as well. Looks like there's a nail every two inches. At least that's what it seems like. If I can get a big piece up, that'd be great. Just gonna keep chiseling away at it here and see what we can get. all the nails it's hard to get under but once I get under I can pull a big section up and that's very satisfying there's just so many nails in this section here all right let's see if I can get underneath this and pull this off of one big strip it looks like it's coming up pretty good so I'm going to take my pry bar and cut along the grout line by hammering it down and then hopefully it'll pull off in one big section. There we go. That was nice. If I could get that to happen all the time, I think I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna get some water, put it down the grout line, and I'm gonna use my diamond wheel on my angle grinder here. And dust isn't too bad with the water added, so that's a plus. 
this should be easier than using the pry bar as a chisel and if I can get underneath it comes up a nice piece that's great and then there's all the nails so out in the main section pour a little bit of water on the floor and I'll just grind my grout line down seems to go a little quicker than using the pry bar just got to be careful not to nick any of the tiles that are already on the floor that are going to stay and I'll pry this up and there we go once I get it started it seems to go pretty good And once I get all this wonder board up, I'm left with all the nails to pull. Okay, over in the kitchen area where the linoleum is, I need to cut that because it goes underneath the cabinets. So I'll just run my oscillating tool along the cabinet and I should be able to get underneath the linoleum and the wood that they put down for a subfloor for the linoleum and it looks like they used staples here so I'll have to pound those in it's a little easier to pound those in than it is to pull those up and you can see I've got a big mess here but I've got it all the way down to where I want I'm going to replace all the wonder board now it's quarter inch thick wonder board but first I need to remove all the nails. So many nails to remove. So I'll just go through and pull all these nails out. Luckily some of them came out with the hardy board, the wonder board. So you can see they used mortar to put this down. So I'm gonna scrape some of that mortar up and use my pry bar to break it up and then I can kind of clean up the mess here and we'll take a look and see what we have to work with. All right, so it's time to start cutting some wonder board. Got a hodgepodge of pieces to put together. Put the wonder board down, screw it down, and then I can start putting in the new tile in all the various places. I want to start out with some construction adhesive. You can use mortar. Some people don't even use any kind of adhesive whatsoever. I like to use construction adhesive. There's nothing to mix. I can just squirt it on. Keeps things from squeaking and moving around. I'll put a bunch on there before I put my hardy board down. I'm going to use hardy board on this one. It matched up with the thickness of the wonder board that was already down there, quarter inch thick. And I used some flooring screws with the star head they won't rust out and I put them every eight inches or so sometimes I go a little bit more and I just fill in all my areas with the hardy board and screw it down This is a pretty tedious process since there's so many little pieces that need to be cut and screwed down. And I have to lay out the different boards, the different cuts, so I know I can get the most out of each board. The nice big pieces here are great. I'll do those first and then fill in with the off fall from the big pieces. So I'll just continue screwing these down till I'm all done and then we can
take a walk around and see what we have here. All right, so I'm going to lay out some tiles now, and I'll do all my cuts that I can first before I make up my uh, batch of mortar. So I'm going to start by cutting these. These are going to be the first tiles, the tiles that go right up against the carpet. And these are reused tiles, ones that I pulled up that are still good. And this is porcelain tile, so it's a little bit harder to cut. I've got my diamond wet saw. And it takes a little bit of time here to run through, making sure it doesn't crack. A lot of times it'll crack at the end, so I gotta go slow at the end. And there's the first piece ready to go. Just repeat that process over and over until I get all my pieces cut that I can cut. I may not be able to cut all the pieces, but the more I can cut before I mix up my mortar, the fresher the mortar will be when I go to put it down. So I've got all my pieces cut. Start mixing my mortar. I like to get a nice smooth consistency. And then I'll take it in. And some of these pieces are small. It's going to be tough to get tough to get the mortar in and comb it and get the correct thickness in the mortar bed. So a lot of these I may back butter some of the tiles just to make sure I get full coverage. And then once I put the tile down, I like to get a rubber mallet and tap the tile just to work all the air bubbles out and make sure that it's embedded in the mortar real good and you can see there's a little extra here which means that I've got good coverage I can pull one up and take a look if I need to but it's always good to clean the mortar up before it dries I found that is much easier than digging the mortar out of the grout joint for sure then I can install my spacers I found the spacers that were the same thickness as the existing spaces bigger areas here are a little bit easier to mortar because you can put a lot on and spread it out and then comb it down I want to make sure I get good coverage here so that I don't have any cracked tiles when someone steps on them and then I can lay my tiles down kind of bed it in there and then I can use my spacers to line everything up make sure everything's level on each side don't want any steps a little bit high here knock this down a little bit work some air out and I got excess mortar underneath so I'll dig that out get that all cleaned up and move on to the next set of tiles All right, next I'm going to move to the area underneath where the vanity is going to go. And I'll start putting my mortar down. It's a bigger area, so I can put a lot down and then spread it out. Since this area is underneath the vanity, I'm going to use some of the new tiles. You can see that they don't exactly match. It's the same pattern. But since these tiles are quite a few years newer and it's a different run, they've changed over the years. I'm going to put those underneath the vanity. That way you don't see them as much. You'll still see part of them and there's going to be some out in the main section that I'll have to use. But I can hide most of these and reuse 
some of the original tiles in the main section so that you don't notice as much of a difference and I'll put them randomly around try to break up any patterns best I can it's out in the main section the hallway area another big area put my mortar on comb it down and then I can start installing the tiles I'll put all the tiles down first and then I'll tap them with the mallet and then put my spacers in. All right, now that I have all the tiles installed, all that's left to do is wait for the mortar to dry, and then we can continue on with our project of half bath to full bath conversion. So check back with us for part 10 to see which direction we go next. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I'm How To Bob. As always, thanks for watching.